Hey there, in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add particle effects to your menu items to add a nice little glow like this. And as a reminder, this tutorial is based on code we did in previous episodes, so you can see a link in the description below if you wanna watch those. Also, I always provide the code, that's also in the description below, so go check that out. All right, let's get started. All right, before we start coding the particles, I'm gonna change a couple things about this to make this show up a little bit better. One, we're gonna change the color of this from red to aqua. It's gonna make the particles look a little bit better. And somebody asked me in the comments, how do I center this? And I'm gonna show you how to do that because I made a mistake in the previous video. So first to change the color, we're gonna just change this uh, in the draw event. We're gonna change it from red to aqua. You can choose whatever you want, whatever looks nice for you. This will make that show up a little bit better. Now to do the centering, uh, where I made the mistake, uh, drawing a rectangle on the screen starts from the exposition and starts drawing it to the right. This doesn't center it when you put this statement in here. The draw set align, um, the H align, horizontal align, only affects the text. So to center this, we really just say from the exposition position minus the button width divided by two. And we're gonna do that here and here on the exposition. This is now gonna draw the rectangle center to the exposition of the object. And now when we do that, we don't need this anymore. We don't need to add this. We just, we take that out and it, the exposition is automatically uh, centered. The last thing, if you want to center the whole object uh, when it gets created in the room, or in the view, you would actually change that here. So you could put something like this, room width divided by two, and that'll center it in the middle of the room. If you have a view though, you're gonna need to use your camera view, not the room, because centering it in the room won't work if your camera's not on top of it. So now this is centered, now let's add the particles. So in the create event here, I have already started the code. This is just gonna make it easier to walk you step by step instead of trying to type this out but we'll go line by line. To create a particle, you first have to start by creating a particle system. And that's what we do here in this first line. We create a variable called particle effects. That could be any variable name that you want. Then you say is equal to particle system create. So now we have a particle system called particle effects. What we do next uh, in, in the case that I'm trying to do here is I'm setting the depth of where these particles will show up and I'm setting it to negative 1000. So you do that by saying part system depth and the index, you pass in the system that you just created and set it to negative 1,000. Negative 1,000, uh, negative numbers are closer. So if you chose a bigger number, it'd be closer than anything else in your, your objects. Okay, now we're going to go create the particle. A particle is an effect that's going to show up. Uh, and let me show you something. I'm going to do particle shape here. I'm going to show you some built-in particle shapes that you can automatically do. So these shapes right here, you can say, make these show up. You can add some information like the size, uh, the transparency, the colors that it starts with and ends with, the lifespan, what direction it's gonna shoot off to. You can do all these things. And then uh, Game Maker very efficiently will make these particles show up on the screen without much management from us. We don't have to manage steps or time or anything like that of how long stuff is gonna take. So what we do here is we're gonna first create a variable. I'm calling it a box flash because that's the particle I wanna create, which is a box. You can name this whatever you want and say part type create. Next, we're gonna pass this as an index to all the things that we wanna change about this particle. So the first thing we're gonna do is define the shape by doing part type shape. We pass in the box flash and now we're gonna tell it we want box flash to be the shape of a line. And again, earlier I showed you in that help screen uh, these are all the types of particles that are built in. You can do a pixel, disk, square. I chose line, so it's this effect. Next, we're going to choose the size. Okay, so again, you pass in the, the particle as an index and you define how big or small you want it. Now you can put a range in here. So you have size minimum, which is the first one, and size maximum and it will randomly choose in between there. So if I had five and 10, it would choose anything between five and 10 as the size. I don't want to change the size, so I've chose five as the size for both of these. So it'll randomly pick between five and five. Next is the increase. So how fast will it increase in size over the lifetime of this 
uh, particle. You can use a negative number if you want it to shrink in size, which is what I did. So this box is going to show up and then shrink in size. Next is the wiggle. So each step uh, that th this particle is alive, it will randomly choose a number to increase or decrease uh, based on that wiggle. So if I put 10 here, it would decrease anywhere between this number and 10. In this case, I don't want it to wiggle at all. I want it to stay constant. Okay, next we're gonna choose the colors. I'm using part type color three, which means I can have three different colors over the lifetime of this particle. Again, bring box flash as the particle I wanna change. And what I'm doing here is I'm making three different colors. Make color RGB is red, green, blue, is a function in Game Maker. You pass in the red value, the green value, and the blue value. And these are numbers between 0 and 255. So 0 is no color of, in this case, it's red. If I put 0 here, no red at all. 255 would mean completely red. In this case, I chose a halfway. So this is halfway red, and it's fully green, and there's no blue in it. Then the next step, not step, but halfway through the life of this particle, I want it to be this color, which is zero red, a halfway on the green, and completely blue. And then on the last, the end of its life, I want it to start fading back to the original color, which was half red, full green, and no blue. It makes a nice little effect, and you'll see. You can make whatever colors you want here. And you do not have to use color RGB. You can put in something like, C red, if that's all you want to do. Uh, and you can put a different color in here. These are just the colors I chose because I liked the effect that it had. Next, alpha. So alpha is transparency. Uh, uh, an object with a zero alpha has is completely transparent, while an object with an alpha of one is not transparent at all. Alpha three means the same thing as color three is you have three different stages the beginning alpha, the middle alpha, and the um, end alpha. In this case, we're gonna start the particle a little transparent. So 0.3 means it's uh, about 30% showing. And then in the middle, I want it to be halfway showing. So I never want this to be fully uh, opaque. I want it to be half transparent. It gives it a see-through effect. And then last is I want it to fade out. So it starts fading to, to nothing. The blend is an additive blend. Do I want this to just show up or do I want it to add the colors on top of whatever is behind it? It's a little different than transparency. It's a little, it gives it a little bit more intense look, almost like it's glowing um, because it's adding the colors instead of blocking the colors. So I'm saying true. I do want an additive blend on this as well. And the last thing we need here is the life. How long is this going to live? And it's in steps. Again, you can do a range of min, which is this first number, and a max. In this case, I want every one of these to be equal length of time, so I chose 20 steps as how long this lives. Now let's go put this in the actual code whenever you change your menu item, and we're going to do that in the step event. We already have something here, menu index does not equal last selected, which tells us that we're changing the menu and we play the sound. Now we want to add some other code. So what we're going to do is add some code here that's going to actually create the particle. And you do that by saying particle part, sorry, particles create. Okay. So what this does is it takes in an index of the particle system. If we go back here. We, this is the particle system right here, particle effects. I'm going to copy and paste that there. Next is the X and Y coordinates. So for this, we're just going to use menu X for the X coordinate. That is what we have created right here, okay? The Y is a little bit more complicated. So we're gonna say menu Y, which is where the menu is gonna be, um, plus the button height, plus the button padding, and then we're gonna multiply that times the menu index. So what that is doing is just making sure that wherever we draw these particles is where the menu index actually is. This looks very similar to this, right? So we had menu I plus button height, button padding times I. But in this case, I don't have an I to work with 
because we're not inside of a loop here and we don't want it to draw for every button. I only want it to draw for the current menu item that's being selected. So that's why we're doing this. Okay, last things we need are the particle type. Now we created that here, which is box flash. Just copy that over. And the last one is number. This is the number of particles that we want to show up. In this case, we only want one. Okay, so that's everything you need. So take a look. That's the whole thing. Now if we uh, play this, we should see a nice little effect showing up that makes it glow every time we switch. Okay, there is a problem here. Um, you notice that the Y is a little off and I do realize I made one mistake. So the next thing that we need to do is, we're gonna, I'm gonna stick it right here. We're gonna say plus button height divided by two. Um, this is gonna make it center into the Y axis. So that's all you need to do to fix that part. All right, now it's highlighting right in the middle of that button, which gives it a nice cool glowing effect. Okay, that does it for today's episode. I hope you got something out of it. You can start to play with your own ideas. In the next menu episode, I'm gonna add some more particles to add some sparkly stuff to it, which is gonna give it a really cool effect. So look forward to that one. All right, thanks as always to you guys. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.